Hello AACPS staff and welcome back to another Nearpod tutorial. In this video we're going to talk about the option for teachers to run reports to see how their students performed and how much engagement they had in any of their Nearpod lessons. When you are still working in a Nearpod lesson the teacher has the ability to access the reports before they even exit out of the lesson. The way that they would do that is to click menu here in the upper left hand corner and choose email report. It's going to pop up a little message asking you to confirm your email address is correct and you would simply click OK to have that email sent to you with the report so that you can view it when it's convenient. But what if you've already exited out of the particular lesson? Teachers don't always have time to review the reports or any data for a lesson in between lesson delivery. When you are here on your Nearpod dashboard, you will have a menu option dedicated to your reports. Once I click on reports, I come to a page that is entirely dedicated to all of the lessons that I have delivered previously, and you'll see them all listed here. If I scroll down and select on one of those lessons, it tells me specifically when I delivered these. You'll see a column here that tells me how many students joined each lesson. We've got a column here that reminds me whether this one was delivered student paced or live and then we even have over here on the right hand side a little pencil here to edit the name of the report. So right now the reports are named for the date and time when they were delivered. But if I don't want to have to remember which class I gave this uh, particular activity to on the 18th versus the 20th, what time is first period versus second period, renaming the reports is a great way to remind you exactly which group that was. So I can change this from November 20th to period three fall activities. And then simply clicking out of that field saves that new name. If you want to see more information about how the students performed during this particular lesson, you would click right on the name to be taken into the lesson. So here we have the report for that November 18th socially distant fall activities lesson that I did with a handful of our teachers. And the first page you land on is a summary. This is a snapshot of how the entire class did. You can see in the first column, it tells us overall participation. Did the students participate in all of the different activities that were included as a part of this lesson? The next column and all of the following columns show you which activities were included in this lesson. So for example, we can see in this one there was a quiz, matching, and so on. If you hover over a particular activity, you even have the ability to click on it to view more specific information about that exact activity. You can do the same by clicking on activity reports here in the upper left. So two different ways to look closer at how the students did and what they contributed during those activities. I'm going to go ahead and select on activity reports to see how we can toggle between the different activities. You'll see here we have a drop down that tells us we're currently viewing the quiz. If I click the drop down, the other activities are matching pairs, collaborate and draw it for this particular lesson. And I can select on any of those to view the specifics for that activity. But I can also use the toggle arrows here to the right of that drop down. So again, two different ways to do the same thing. If we turn our attention all the way over to the right hand side of the information for the quiz, we can see the average score of students on this quiz was a 65. 91% of the students in my class participated in the quiz, meaning they attempted it or took it. And then if we look at the bottom, you'll see I have the roster of who joined me for this particular activity. It tells me the exact score they got and then also relays that as a percentage value. Coming back up to the top, we click that little arrow to progress forward. And now let's see what type of information is available for a matching pairs activity for the reports. Once again, all the way over on the right, it tells me 91% of my students participated in the activity. So just getting an idea of overall engagement from my students. And then down at the bottom, it tells me how many matches were completed and how many times it took them. For example, you'll see some people needed a couple of extra tries to get all of the matches correct. And then it also tells me, did they actually eventually complete the activity or did they kind of give up maybe out of frustration on that. Once again, the toggle arrow 
takes me through to each of the different activities. For a Collaborate board, I can view it in an editable fashion now, which would allow me to change it, or I can click the View Only, and it takes me back to what everybody contributed when we were collaborating in this workspace here. Finally, when it comes to reports, let's talk about sharing reports with someone else. If we turn our attention to the far upper right hand corner of this page, you'll see I have a button here to email and a button to download. Let's start with sharing the reports with someone else. Email is an option here. When I select on email, I can choose who I want to send this report to. So maybe I had a co-teacher in class today. Maybe I had someone from my content area or someone on my administrative team come and observe me today and they might like to see how the students actually did in participating in my lesson. Email allows me to choose who else might like to see this report and simply fill in their email address and send the report to them. The other option, download, allows me to pull reports down in a fashion that could be printed or shared with people face-to-face -face who might need to see those. You'll see I have two options under download. I can pull the entire lesson report, which of course will tell me how all the students in the class did, or I can pull a lesson report for an individual student, which is great if I'm having a parent-teacher conference. Let's see what an entire session view looks like by choosing entire lesson report. Once I download and save that report, I can see here that I have some of the same basic information. For example, it starts with a summary of how the entire class did as a part of this lesson. And then as I scroll down, I can see which of those additional features are available to me. For example, that class collaborate board does not load here in the downloaded report. So if I wanted to see uh, how my students performed in that, give them feedback, or look at their contributions, I would need to go back and pull the live report for that. But I can see that I do in fact get uh, the specifics of how my students did on the quiz as I scroll down and even how they did on the matching pairs activity here. Returning to the downloads option here and turning our attention to that student view option, this is where I can choose which student or students in the class I might want to pull a report for. So perhaps I have parent teacher conferences coming up and these are the students whose parents are coming or maybe I have an IEP meeting or any other uh, collaborative meeting between me and other staff members who work with these students and I might want to pull the report of how they performed in this lesson to demonstrate uh, next steps to take for this student. Once I've selected them I can click on the download option and once I download those reports, I can see that the students' names are on each of these reports and I can simply click to open that report and now I can view how this particular student in my class performed as a part of this lesson. And again, I have something that would be great to take to a conference involving this student's performance in class. I hope this short overview of accessing Nearpod reports has helped you better understand how you can utilize those.